come with me now to Washington, D.C. in the fall of 1972. The next day I was to argue in front of the U.S. Supreme Court. 34 years after Roe v. Wade, access to reproductive health care in the Napa and Sonoma Valleys is vanishing. On February 1, 2007, NARAL Pro-Choice California and over 200 activists and community leaders gathered in Napa both to celebrate the landmark decision that guaranteed the right to safe and legal abortion and to empower the community to use the political process to protect choice. The summit featured Sarah Weddington, who, at age 27, won the landmark case Roe v. Wade. It just made me realize how impacting this issue really is for myself, for my daughter, for any other woman. California legalized abortion four years before Roe. We have always been a leader in this movement, and it is our obligation to continue that leadership. California was a beacon a haven of liberty and personal decision making and good health care. And so California, I think, has a special place in all our hearts. Because if, if the worst were to happen, we would look again to California. For me, it's all about the language and finding common ground. I am amazed at how critical this issue is. So, Nero Pro-Choice California, what do we do? We are the political arm of the pro-choice movement. And what that means is we focus every day on electing pro-choice candidates, on promoting pro-choice public policy at the state, federal, and local levels, and educating, inspiring, and motivating pro-choice voters. We cannot change what is happening in this country unless we change who is running this country. And we do that literally from the courthouse to the White House, and that's our, our, our mission uh, as we move forward every day. I think one of the things that someone of my age and length of time in this battle learns is that we need to change our language, which is one of the reasons for coming here. You have to keep learning, and this gives us the new approach to t reach younger people so that we might keep people voting the right way and keep pro-choice candidates in office. This is a picture of the day the bill uh, making most second and third trimester abortions illegal. Uh, this is the day the bill was signed. Oh, yeah. And the caption of it reads, Would anyone who's ever had a gynecological exam please raise your hand? <laughs> I think traditionally Republicans stand for individual choice and liberty, and being pro-choice would seem to be the natural place for the Republican Party, so that's why me and a few others are trying to change the party, and hopefully we can uh, work with NARAL to effectu effectuate that change. Thanks. An abstinence-only education, that oh-so-successful example that George W. Bush likes to promote, <laughs> is being taught illegally here in California schools. That we make sure our young people have realistic, honest, medically accurate sex education stop lying to them when their lives are at risk with HIV AIDS and STDs. Stop the lying. What's resonating with me this morning is all these wonderful pro-choice people together and a lot of emphasis on the prevention. I think both Sarah and Amy Everett have really used this event to both bring attention to everything we have to celebrate here in California, but also to some of the limitations to access that even women in our own backyard still face. And so it is my great honor to be here to talk about history. I am, after all, historical. <laughs> but you are the future. It is you with your work, your contributions, the power of your voice, the effect of your work, and your cooperation with organizations that share those values, narrow being key, that will predict the future. I hope we will never lose Roe versus Wade, and I hope that we will always, as a principal in this country, say key personal decisions are not for the government to make. Thank you.